Why can't I function? <laughs> Why is this so difficult? I need help. I need help. Hi. How's it going? So, this is my review of the cannibalism book that Timothy Chalamet is going to star in called Bones and All by Camille DeAngelis. I was very intrigued to read this book because I love stories about cannibalism. I don't know what this is about me, but I like reading about it. I like reading all the guts and the gore and like demonic shit. That's, that's my jam. And so when I found out that uh, Mr. Luca Guadagnino was going to make a cannibalism movie and it was going to be based off of a cannibalism book and it was going to star Mr. Timothy Chalamet, I was like, I have to read it. I have to read it because I read anything that Mr. Timothy Slimothy Chalamet is in. And uh, even if I don't like the book, I'll still read it and I'll watch the movie and I'll, yep. Yeah, can you tell I'm a fan? Can you tell that I um, have problems? And that I'm queer. Uh, <laughs> um, I only filmed one clip of me reading because I'm a menace. Because I can't do anything right. Because I struggle with life as a whole. And so I only filmed one clip. And, uh, yeah, sorry about that, um, but after that clip, I made an update, so, yeah. Boy, Tway named Troy, used to live in Detroit. Big dope dealing money, he was getting some coins. Was the shootouts with the lure, but he lived in a palace. Bo bought me Alexander McQueen, he was keeping me stylish. Now that's real, real, real. Gun in my purse, bitch, I came dressed to kill. Who wanna go first? I had him pushing daffodils. I I'm high as hell, I only took a half a pill. I'm on some dumb shit. By the way, what he say? He can tell I ain't missing no meals. Come through and fuck him in my automobile. Let him eat it with his grills. He keep telling me to chill. He keep telling me it's real that he love my sex appeal. He said he don't like them pony. He wants something he can grab. So I pull up in a jack and I hit him with a jab. Like dun 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 dun. He keeps telling me it's real that he love my sex appeal. He said he don't like a pony, he wants something he can grab. So I pull up in the Jag Mayweather with the jab like dun 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 dun. Hello. <laughs> this is really awkward. Um. Okay, those people aren't having sex. I thought there was people on their balcony having sex, but they're not. Or not. I have to look there. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so hi. Uh, I don't think I've talked to the camera yet, but hi. How's it going? Um, it's late at night, clearly, by the sky. Um, I am halfway through Bones and All by Camille DeAngelis. And one thing I can say is I cannot wait for the press tour for this movie because... I swear to God, if someone <laughs> if someone doesn't bring up Army Hammer during this press tour, I think I might sue because of 
If you don't know anything about Bones and All or what's happening with this book or what's going on, uh, which I think I might explain later in the beginning of this video, but I don't, I don't think I made an intro, so uh, oops. But basically, this book is about cannibalism and about this girl named Marin who is a cannibalist. Right? That's how you say it. I am a cannibalist. I, you are a cannibalist. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay, so she, Marin, is a cannibalist, um, but doesn't really know why and doesn't really know where she got it from uh, because her mom is not one and she kind of feels like a loner and feels like an outsider. So, yeah, she's trying to figure out how she got to be who she is today and that's basically the premise of this book she's just trying to find her dad and maybe her dad will explain to her why she likes to eat people and then you meet um, a couple of other people along the way and one of those people is a boy or an I guess you can say he's not a boy because technically he's 19 so that does make him an adult but like he's just a guy who um, is a cowboy, he's a bit southern, but his name is Lee, and he too is a cannibalist. And so they are kind of going on this journey together to help Marin find her dad. Um, but throughout the entire book, it basically is all about like embracing who you are and like your individuality and like you are who you are and I guess you can't really change that. Which I understand is like, that fits under like Luca Guadagnino's like repertoire for the movies that he makes. However, because of, you know, the situation with Mr. Shmarmy Schmammer, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I'm just like, I cannot wait for someone to ask about him and then I cannot wait to see Luca's reaction or Timmy's reaction and s see what they're gonna say because it's just like the entire book is like we are cannibalists and there's nothing that we can do about it but might as well just be who we are and you know live but our lives one thing I will say about this book that I was not expecting was how nuanced it would be and how deep it would be there's so many like i've been tabbing this book a lot which like i'm halfway through which is why i made this update it's like my halfway through update but i have tabbed this so much for just like halfway through the book and i was i wasn't expecting to do that at all i usually don't tab books this much but there was like a lot there's a lot of like character developing going on here and just like a lot of thoughts that haven't been fully discovered yet because it's in first person we're reading through Marin's perspective but I feel like a problem with first person or first POV in general through any sort of like genre of books whether that's YA or lit fic or whatever maybe is that we don't get the full like we don't get the full picture basically and we don't truly understand why our main character is feeling this way through a first person we don't truly see like how and why and what is the reasoning and like the deep-rooted emotions that the characters are feeling because you know as people in general we go through shit and us going through shit helps us realize all of this you know all the trauma that we've just endured and the reasoning behind it and the reasoning why we are like this and why we are like the people who we are but because it's first person it's just like it's a lot slower and as a third party member in this kind of like a fly on the wall or something like that it's a little bit like you're feeling this because of this shit because your mom was like this or you know, you grew up like this and no one told you why and all this other stuff going on with the characters. And so for a first person narrative, especially through a wide contemporary novel, which I 
um, am a pretentious asshole and do don't really read why contemporary novels because I think that they're really cheesy and really um, boring and I can't relate to them because I'm not 15 anymore. I'm 20. But I was very surprised by this and I can actually like relate a lot to Marin and I think that's the point and I think that's why maybe this book is becoming a movie because the characters are relatable and like you can kind of they're lost they're lost people and they're trying to figure out who they are and I feel like we've all been through that but then there's this part of my brain that's like wait why am I trying to empathize with a cannibal <laughs> They're cannibals. They're doing bad shit. And like Marin knows that she's doing bad shit, but she doesn't know how to fix it because she doesn't understand why she does it. And I feel like that's the reason why it's so intriguing to read. But then it's also like, but there are cannibals out there and they are doing bad shit. And they, they have the same reasoning that I bet Marin and Lee do, but but like it, they're hurting people. And I know, and it's like this whole thing again with Army Hammer. It's like he hurt people he hurt the women that he was with but i don't want to like give him glory or give him my empathy because oh he's just who he is and he has to embrace you know his weird kicks i don't want to do that shit i don't want to do that at all and i feel like this book is doing that and that's why i don't i mean not specifically to army hammer but like it's just I wonder if this is like there and there I mean like Luca Guadagnino and Timothy Chalamet's like response to the whole thing. I I don't know. I'm a bit confused. It's just kind of like, why this book? <laughs> why adapt this book for trying to basically make a coming of age movie? Why why this one? Why this one? Also another thing that I'm a little confused by on why Luca Guadagnino would adapt this book and not another book, I should say, um, is because a lot of Luca Guadagnino's like book to movie adaptations or just movies in general, there's a lot of emphasis on the atmosphere and environment of the setting of his movies and the relationship with the environment to the characters, what that means for them. For example, in Calling By Your Name, the reason why there's not a distinct city, like, I think it's referenced maybe once that they're in Crema, Italy, but the opening title, or not the opening title, but one of the first opening scenes of the movie is, it says, somewhere in northern Italy in 1983. That's somewhere in northern Italy because there's not a distinct place and it, it's not a really a distinct time frame, it's just somewhere in northern italy 1983 it gives this like broad sense of the world and like it makes it feel open and welcoming and free and that's why the characters can just you know love and Edio and oliver can just express their desires for one another and their love for one another and their friendship with each other and whatever is beyond that and it just feels so welcoming because technically in the 1980s and especially in Italy, it was the time of, hold on, there's a police boat going. Interesting. Okay, but during the 1980s, this was like a time of, you know, AIDS and HIV and many queer people were dying and Italy is a Catholic and known to be fascist country. It wouldn't normally or especially during this time historically would it accept people like Edio and oliver but because it's just somewhere in northern italy it's broad and it it doesn't feel completely real and this love is real and it's just like basically a huge oxymoron for what actually went down in the 1980s and then also okay let's take suspiria for example suspiria is or was a movie that was made like a long time ago and it's a horror film but he adapted his own version of it and even though it's only based on one setting the psychoticness of the dance studio 
and the dancers themselves and what they are dancing to and the instructor and everything plays a huge role on the main character's psyche and the dance room and all the mirrors reflecting them and reflecting their bodies and what they're seeing it plays such a pivotal role in how the plot goes on and how the characters see themselves but however in this book I don't feel like there's a huge emphasis on the environment or on the atmosphere. Like over the course of the book, she's like traveling state through state to find her dad and meet, I guess, other people that are similar to her. But there's not like a complete emphasis on what this state means to her or what do all these places mean to her or what this journey means to her, at least and not in the same depth as like call me by your name or suspiria or even we are who we are like it doesn't like it in my opinion it doesn't add up to the repertoire of luca guadagnino's films so i'm curious to see how that's gonna be but i'm also like only halfway through so maybe maybe i'll learn a bit more but yeah those are my thoughts oh and then one more thing and uh, I feel like people are gonna hate me for this, but I feel like, I mean, I understand Mr. Slimothy Shlalame is part of Luca Guadagnino's multiverse and cinematic universe, whatever you want to call it. So I get it. It makes sense that Luca would cast to me, but I feel like if you've read the book, I feel like Alex Wolf <laughs> would have been a better Lee than Timothy would have. I don't know. Cause okay, Alex Wolf, for those that don't know, he was his brothers to Nat Wolf, who's like very known for Paper Towns and all those like really coming of age movies back in like two thousand ten and shit. Um, but his brother, Alex Wolf, he's like in hereditary, I believe. And he's such a good actor. But Alex Wolf fits like the same you know like he's a skinny pasty white boy who has like dark brown curly hair and like could potentially be you know a heartthrob but Alex Wolf is very assertive in his acting and in his roles whereas Timothy I mean maybe that will change it is acting so maybe he will be more assertive when he does play Lee but Timothy is very you know In the beginning of all of his roles, or through his acting, you can see that he's a little awkward. (laughs) And I feel like Lee is way too assertive and like way too confident in what he believes in and what he's trying to get Marin to believe in and what he's trying to like enforce in like we are we are monsters, we are cannibals, but it's better to live than to just grieve off of what we've done. And I feel like I don't know. I feel like through ev- like through Timothy's acting, through all of like the characters, because I would say that like Paul Atreides from Dune is a pretty assertive character. But even in the beginning of Dune, you can kind of tell that he's a li- a little bit more shy and timid, and you know, a bit more reserved. But Lee is so Lee is so assertive. Lee is so confident. He knows who he is, and I feel like. I don't know. I'm just a little nervous that it won't add up. I don't know. I'm just a little nervous. So I feel like Alex Wolf would have been better casting. Like if I had to do my own fan casting. I think the actress that's going to play Marin is fine. I liked her a lot in the movie Waves. So I think she's going to be okay. But yeah, I think I would have casted Alex Wolf instead of Mr. Slimothy Schlalame. But yeah, overall... I would say so far it's like a four star read. I'm really enjoying it. I love all of the literary references. There's like been a lot of references to some of my personal favorite books like The Lord of the Rings and The Chronicles of Narnia and Master and Margarita especially. And so I've been liking a lot of that because it makes me really even more to Marin as a person. But yeah, I mean, so far it's okay. It's pretty good. I mean... It's fine. Okay. I keep on I keep on looking at this like this apartment because all of like there's no curtains and there's no like blinds or whatever. And I keep on seeing like these two people and I don't know if they're having sex with each other or they're being intimate with each other. 
or they're about to have sex, but they're like very touchy feely. But they haven't been doing anything. So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to stop spying on people and continue reading. That was my update. And that was a 16 minute update. Holy shit, Abby. You need to shut up. I just want to throw this book away. I just want to throw this book away. I want to fucking chuck it. And I want to ruin it. And I want to rip it. Because. Oh my god. I finished. I can't. I can't. Why? What was the reason? What was the reason? What was the reason? Oh my god. Okay. Can't. I can't. Okay. I swear to god. Okay. There you go. How's it feel be the center of handshake to me? I have had freak a second in my head. It's been stuck in my head for like a week now. I mean, I need help. Anyway, hi. <laughs> okay, so I finished Bones and All. And based off of the last clip of me punching this book and throwing it across my room, you might not think that I enjoyed it, but I did. I actually did. I gave it three stars, which isn't a bad score. It's just... You know, some things fall flat and then didn't hit the spot, but overall, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed the plot, I enjoyed the way that the pacing was, I enjoyed some of the themes that were mentioned and involved in this book. So overall, I liked it. I didn't think it was anything like revolutionary or mind-blowing. It didn't like make me want to, you know, just drop everything and like, Gave it five stars. It wasn't like anything. I was like, wow, this is this is amazing. This is the best book ever. Uh, it wasn't anything like that. Um, there were some moments that I felt like felt a little flat and they deserved a bit more of an oomph to them, but a little bit more of just like a push. But yeah, overall it wasn't bad. I really enjoyed it. The moral of the story of this book is to basically embrace who you are and be you know comfortable in who you are and you know accept your faults and accept the bad parts of you but that being said it kind of made me feel a little nervy because this book is about cannibals and the fact that you know the point is to accept who they are but when they're doing like bad shit like eating people and killing people, then I, it makes me like, it makes me feel really, you know, unnervy because I'm just like, I don't know if I should feel empathy towards these people. Like throughout the book, you see their struggles and you see Marion's struggles more specifically and her trying to deal with the fact that she is a cannibal and it's bad and she does bad things and she doesn't know how to stop and she doesn't know why and she feels like, no one loves her, no one cares about her, and she feels like a burden to her mother and everybody around her. And she's just, she's going through a lot, which is very normal for everyday life and people in general. I think we all go through things like that. But she is just like, because she is a cannibal, she has like this constant feeling in her mind where it's like, I am a monster. I don't deserve anything. I feel like a, the most terrible person ever. And it's like, you're not, but you are killing people. <laughs> you are eating people and you are um, murdering. And that is not good. And uh, I don't, I don't know. Because then it's also like, well, there are cannibals in real life that are bad people and they do kill people and they harm people. And I'm just like, well, I don't have any empathy for them, but should I have empathy for these people? I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's like this weird, like it's questioning everything. And I think that's the point, which I like, but I'm also like, I don't know. It's hard, but I think that's the point. I think that's the point. And I like that it's making me feel like that. And so props to that. However, um, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous to read this because this book does 
it did come out in 2015 and it is in first person and so i thought it was definitely going to be like how marin specifically was going to be like one of those like i'm not like other girls kind of girl and she was going to be like oh no one loves me because i'm a monster and nobody wants to be friends with me i've never been friends with girls because I just, ugh, I can't, and I, like, you know, there was moments of that, there was like this one scene where she's in like the bathroom stall at her like old high school, a flashback scene, and she's scraping the blood off of her fingernails, and then there's like these couple of girls who are looking at her, and she's like, through the mirror, they would stare at me as I spit. Screw this get, oh, screw the cap back on a bottle of Listerine and stuffed it in my backpack. Maybe that was why I never made friends with girls. And it's like, no girly, that's not why you've never made friends with girls. The reason why you've never made friends with girls is because you have a hard time opening up to people and you don't let anybody in and therefore you're not very trusting and that's why. Which I get, it makes sense because like you've been through some shit, you moved around a lot, it, it's hard, I get it, but also like you're not special because you've never been friends with girls. There, that, there was like that one moment that kind of made me like, mm, I don't know, this feels very YA. This feels very like back 2014, 2015 Tumblr, like. But most of the time it's not really like that. There's a lot of, usually what the things that she goes through and a lot of the dialogue that's written in here, both internally, externally as well. It's, you know, there is depth in it and there is nuance. I really enjoyed all like the literary references that were brought in, uh, specifically the Master Margarita because, hold on, there was like this really good line. So there's this part where the Master Margarita is brought up because I think one character owns the book and then she eats that character and then she takes the book. But, uh, this is like, Master Margarita is one of my favorite novels of all time, but it's referenced here and it's like, I nudged a book on the floor with my foot. I picked it up, The Master Margarita. On the cover was a grinning cat holding a pistol. I opened the book, flipped to a random page and read, everything will turn out right. The world is built on that. And I think that overall is the theme of this book. And I love that they included that because I love Master Margarita and I love, just like the wickedness and the craziness that happens. It's a very bizarre book, but it's also about like death and grief and love and loss and all that shit. And that's definitely in this book. So the only thing that did bother me though about this book, which I think is a pretty big deal in my opinion, because I did not enjoy the actual cannibalism that was in this book. Now don't get me wrong, I love cannibalism. Not as a thing, not like as a real thing, <laughs> but as like a trope in novels because I love like Berserk, I love Tokyo Ghoul, I love all that gory like blood wrenching guts thing. I know it's not everybody's thing, but it's my thing. I, it's my cup of tea, okay? But there wasn't enough of it in here. And maybe that's because, you know, this is a YA novel and like you have to kind of be a little PG about it because you know it felt like every single time there was like a cannibalism scene it felt like one of those like rom-com movies where it's pg-13 and so when the two main characters like are about to have sex they don't actually show them having sex they just like show them making out and they cut to like the next day that was like what was in here with all the cannibalism scenes, which I was really mad at because this is a book about cannibalism. I want the cannibalism scenes. It, just every single time there like was a scene where Marin was about to eat somebody or Lee was about to eat somebody, it would just be like describe, like they would describe the scent of the people and describe what they like smelled like food wise there was one character who smelled like chili dogs and so she just described the scent of chili dogs the entire time and that like drove her into like the madness of wanting to eat somebody but beyond that there was nothing else like i wanted the description of her like tearing apart people of you know cutting open people of draining their blood of like yeah I, I wanted more i wanted more and also there was this one part in the beginning where okay so there's like this 
in the beginning, this is not a spoiler. I don't think it's a spoiler. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a spoiler. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Um, because it's in like the first chapter, I believe. And like on the like either the first or second page. So there we get introduced to I think Marin's first ever kill when she is like a young girl. I think she might be like seven or something. And she's eating her babysitter. But she saved, like you can see on the ground, like all the bones, all the blood and everything, but she saved the eardrum in her mouth. And I thought that was very interesting. And I thought there was gonna be more to that and we would have that fleshed out because it's referenced later on in another kill that she's done. And then there's another character named Sully, who's a pretty significant character later on in the book. I won't say too much about him, but he doesn't have an ear as well. And so I thought the ear was gonna be like a motif to like something that she enjoyed about herself. Like she took pride in the ear. She wanted to keep the ear because it was like, momentous for her or so, like it had like a significant value to her but that wasn't fleshed out either and I felt like that would have been a great opportunity for some like character development and it, I don't know it just felt really flat I, I was just like come on I, I, I wanted more I wanted more gory I wanted more description I wanted more of like how she was feeling when she ate these people. I thought that was like the whole point. I thought it would be gnarly. I thought it would be a bit grotesque and it wasn't, I don't know. So yeah, but overall, I enjoy this book. I cannot wait to see what like the movie is gonna be like. I can't wait to see what Luca Guadagnino adapts from this because personally, I didn't think it was that terrifying. I didn't think it was that, you know, gory or scary, but from some of like the stills that I have seen, I haven't seen the trailer yet. I kind of want to react to that on here, but I haven't, I don't know, based off of what I, like the pictures that I've seen, it seems like it's gonna be kind of terrifying. I can kind of like get a similar like Suspiria vibe with like the very psychological and like thrilling element to it because I didn't get that from here so I'm intrigued to see how he's gonna kind of turn that and make it into his own thing and again I'm very excited to see Timmy as Lee I again think that Alex Wolf would have been better but that's just my opinion I love Timothy Shalmay don't get me wrong but I don't know and yeah I really enjoyed this book oh enjoyed it I, I liked it I liked this book it wasn't one of my favorites but if you are into some, like, if you are into cannibalism, like, shit, like, trope-wise, and, uh, but you don't want to read something that has, like, tons of blood and guts in it, but are still looking for, like, you know, a good plot, a good romance, or good chemistry between the characters, then I highly recommend this. But if you want a bit more, um... I don't know, maybe this book isn't for you, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say, I guess. I don't know. I'm scared. Look at him. <laughs> Why does he have red hair? Look at his face. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Wait, wait. Fuck, okay. You don't think I'm a bad person. <laughs> oh, it's a lot bit more scary. Oh, wow. Okay, they actually do stuff. They didn't do that. Cute, cute, cute. All I think is that I love you. They don't say that in the book. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited, but I'm scared. I'm terrified. Okay. Ah, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, stick around for more, maybe. Okay. Bye. Have a good day.